Since we gave strings methods the proper treatment, I want to do the same for arrays. So we'll do that here. And let me create a couple of arrays. Um, here I've got an array called names and an array called others. I've got an array called lost and an array called Fibonacci. So the obvious difference is that here I'm working with strings, here I'm working with numbers. All right, so we're looking at methods that can be applied to arrays, right? So um, the first thing we can do is combine two arrays together. So we can use the concat method. So here I'm going to take the lost numbers and I'm going to concat them to the Fibonacci numbers, giving me a combined set of array values. Here I'm going to go uh, node array dash methods, the name of the file I created. And I get a long set, a complete set, or you can kind of see the division between the two sets. Now they're all in one array. Okay. Seems like it might be helpful at some point. Otherwise, we'd have to loop through and push or pop, or I mean push uh, elements of one array into the other array. That might be a little bit... Uh, a little bit uh, of a cumbersome process. You can also do something interesting like console.log and we can take combined or the combine. Uh, well, we don't need that. We can use Fibonacci. And um, what we'll do is call uh, join. And I can say, hey, join all the elements of the array together and separate them with this string. So I'm just gonna use like a tilde here for no other reason than the fact that we just haven't used a tilde yet. And I think now we've used every character on the keyboard at least once. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, save that and then run it. All right, and you can see that I just merely printed out the Fibonacci numbers with a tilde. Join them together into a single string, but they're separated by a tilde now. We've already talked about uh, or demonstrated push and pop. I don't want to go back into those, but they're essentially ways to add elements to the array or remove the last element from the array. There's some other ways to do that too. Um, for example, here we've got a uh, console.log. We'll take the lost numbers and we'll call the shift method. And what the shift method will do is take one item off the front side of the array and it'll return it back to us to print out. But then if we go and look at the array, we'll see that it actually removed it. So it's essentially a pop, but instead of working off the back end, it works on the front end. Okay, so let's see that in action and we get that exact behavior that I described. Great. Um, we can do something called an unshift, which is to add items to the front. So it's essentially just like a push, except we're gonna add items to the front, one or more items. So here we go with the lost unshift, and then we're gonna say, hey, let's add a, we can add one, we can add two, we can add a bunch of items, right? And so now when we do console.log lost numbers, whoops, we'll see, whoops, what did I mess up? I call it list instead of lost. There we go. And so now I've added the values one, two, three, and four as new elements of my array. And then it continues on with eight, 15, 16, 23, and 42, okay? Comment all these out. Moving on. Let's um, let's find an element. Uh, or first of all, here uh, console.log. Let's take the names and reverse their order. So first of all, we'll start with the original order, and then. We'll tell it to reverse and we'll print that out. So originally the David, Eddie, Alex, Michael, but then we get Michael, Alex, Eddie, David, all right? 
Uh, furthermore, what we can do is go console.log um, names.sort. It's a sort method. I got to use the method invocation operator. So now when I run it, we get the alphabetical order Alex, David, Eddie, Michael. All right. Next up, let's. Um, Let's see how you can identify where a given element is in an array by looking up its value using an index of method. So here we're going to go console.log and we'll go others.index of, and I'm going to look up the element named mark. All right. And so let's see where it's at. It should be the third element of the array. So I'm going to go back up here to others. Zero, one, two, three. It's at the third element, so then I can go grab it. Okay. Um, how about we look at and find the last index of, and let's take those combined numbers. Remember those, all those numbers, we basically put them together. Let's go the last index of the value one. So here, first of all, let's do this just so we can easily see what the current value of combined is. And then we'll say, hey, we're going to search for the last time the value 1 appears in my list. Which array the element is it at? Right. Whoops, what did I do this time? I think it's just combined, right? Still not right. Ah, because I commented it out. Now let's try it. There we go. All right, so you can see that our combined variable holds 4, 8, 15, 16, 23, 42, 1, 1, 2, 3. So now I want to see what element is the last, and it says it's at the seventh element. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Zero based, so the last index of one would be at seven. So it's useful if I'm looking through a large set of data and I want to find the last instance of a given value, I can use last index of instead of index of, which would give me the first index, okay. All right, moving on. Um, you know, previously we looked at the map function of an array. I uh, don't want to belabor that because we've already seen it, um, but we can do other interesting things too, like we can create a filtered list so uh, using arrow functions so var filtered equals and we'll go with com combine dot filter and now I'm going to give it an arrow function so for every number I'll just say it's x I can give it any input parameter name so here's the body of my little arrow function if x is less than or equal to 15, then I want to return x, all right? And effectively what will happen is it'll return only those numbers that match this expression. So that when I do console.log filtered, I should only see numbers that are less than or equal to 15, and so I get a filtered version of that of that combine array. Pretty cool, and a good example of why you would want to use um, arrow functions. Um, similarly, you can do something using a uh, what's called an iterable. It's a method called for each. So this will go through each uh, element of an array. And inside of that, I can then create an arrow function, similar to things we've done in the past. All right, where I'm actually just going to, for each element of the array, go ahead and console.log this string and interpolate in the name that's passed in. Pretty cool. And then uh, we can also do some checks. 
So for example, I can say, hey, can you tell me if every one of the values inside of my array match a certain condition? So here I would go console.log, and I'm gonna take that filtered list that I just created here. So this should contain all of the values that are less than 15 from my combine. And um, here I'm just gonna say, hey, uh, let's go filtered. Is every one of those values, um, and here's where I'm gonna create an arrow function. So let's call this num. Are every one of those numbers less than 10? True or false? False. Why is that? Well, I happen to know that there's a, at least a 15 in there. Maybe if we increase the number to something like 16. Are all the numbers less than 16? Well, they better be because they wouldn't have matched this criteria, right? True, okay. So that's the every method of an array. Similarly, we can look at sum. So tell me if at least one element of the array matches a condition. So here again, console.log, start with that. Let's create an arrow function. Um, so, whoops, we'll start off with, uh, use the Fibonacci numbers. So, sum, true or false? Well, let's start off here with an arrow function, number, are all the nums greater than 50? True or false? True, okay. Are they all greater than 100? Or are there any of them? It, there's at least one item greater than 100. That's what we're testing for here. False. There's no items in that Fibonacci sequence that we have here in our array that are greater than 100. All right. So hopefully, first of all, you can see that there are some very useful uh, helper methods on the array built in native. Secondly, more examples of arrow functions that are used inside of some of these methods. Hopefully that's useful. Let's keep going. See you in the next video. Thanks.